I just realized I never really gave a concluding remark about this engine swap project. I finished it a couple of weeks ago and it's just been sitting here for a while. Um, the bolt that was stuck in there I was able to remove with a hammer and chisel uh, until I got like a millimeter or two out uh, of thread engagement that I could just uh, or I got it out by a millimeter or two and then I was use, able to use a pair of pliers to kind of like uh, just kind of plier it out um, and I think what happened was uh, the uh, thread was too short in the new engine just ever so slightly too short and the bolt was a little too long from the old engine such that I was trying to torque out the outside of the bolt and the inside was already bottomed out and uh, that created a lot of stress uh, at the weakest point of the bolt like right here poor lighting but it's like uh, that's how it bolt broke that's how the thread started expanding and uh, became longer and broke at the weakest point but I was able to take care of that just get a new bolt put it in and instead of putting in uh, 30 I think foot pounds or 40 foot pounds I only put down like 20 to 25 foot pounds because there's less threads uh, engagement in there left in the engine block so like when I hammer on the threads as I was taking out the broken bolts it probably fucked up the threads even more so I didn't want to jeopardize that and so I didn't put it down quite quite as specified by the manual um, other than that it was mostly just connecting the hoses back and putting everything back together which should, should be much easier than taking everything apart because uh, when I you know I had never taken off the throttle bodies and uh, disconnecting throttle cables and um, just learning where everything was beforehand while taking it off was a much it was much easier to put everything back on in my opinion um, but <clears throat> I still have a long ways to go with this job because the the drivetrain sprockets needs to be replaced uh, the radiator has a leak in it stupid fucking new radiator came with a leak for some reason um, and I can't return it because I bought it a while ago and I need to rebuild the master cylinder on the rear brake um, and there's rust in the gas tank that caused the fuel pump to clog up so I might even need to buy an aftermarket fuel pump so still a long ways to go in this restoration but the engine swap has been uh, pretty straightforward it's just kind of tedious and it can be daunting for people who have never done it before but looking back it's just more like if you go through the parts one and two it should pretty much cover all the like the nitty-gritty details that you need to do look out for to do a good job so that's all